Select the major product of the following reaction sequence. So we see in our starting material that we have an, an aryl bromide. And we've also got an acetal. So acetals, we hopefully remember, are protected either aldehydes or ketones. So the carbon that has the two single bonds to oxygen, that is the acetal carbon. Um, and so when you're protecting this, right, you'd be starting from the carbonyl here and you get the acetal, which kind of looks like a diether. And when you do the hydrolysis, you're gonna cleave that off and make it back into a carbonyl. Um, so we use acetals as protecting groups. So this is a protecting group. Um, and specifically, this one is a protecting group for an aldehyde. And the reason why we know it was an aldehyde is we can see one, two, three bonds to this carbon atom. The fourth bond that is implied would then be a hydrogen. So this is a protected aldehyde in this case. Uh, but we can also use these same sort of protecting groups for ketones. Okay, so as we go through this reaction, maybe we'll be able to see why... Uh, we had this group protected. So the first thing we're doing is we're adding magnesium metal and diethyl ether. So with an aryl or alkyl bromide, these are conditions to make a Grignard reagent. That magnesium is going to insert in between the carbon bromine bond. So that's what's going to take place in this first step. And that answers our question about why we might want an aldehyde protected, because we know that aldehydes react with Grignard reagents. So if we don't want that to react, we would need to have it protected. So we will still have that acetal and we will have the magnesium bromide. So we've got a Grignard reagent. And so Grignard reagents, we typically see these, they can react with acidic hydrogens. That's not normally what we're going for. We're normally trying to add it to an electrophilic carbon. And so that's what we have here in this two-step process. That was the first step. In the second step here, we're going to take this Grignard reagent that we just formed and we're adding solid carbon dioxide, otherwise known as dry ice. And so we can do the addition of a Grignard to the carbon of carbon dioxide the same way we've seen it add to other carbonyl compounds. So we can treat this magnesium bromide bond as almost being ionic. So this carbon of the benzene ring is your nucleophilic carbon that is gonna attack the carbonyl carbon. So we can have it attack, and we can break either one of these pi bonds. It's symmetrical, so it doesn't matter. And so after we do that, we will see that we have um, still our benzene ring, still our acetal, and our new bond here is between the carbon of the benzene ring and the carbon of that carbon dioxide. And so we've still got a pi bond left. And then we have O minus. So we have a carboxylate. Um, and I better put the hydrogen back on there or else I will have inadvertently turned that into a carbon. Um, and then in the final step is a hydrolysis. So we are going to hydrolyze this as well as protonate the carboxylic acid. So I'll show the protonation step first, and then we'll take a look at the hydrolysis. So this, this step is probably pretty straightforward. We're just grabbing that proton, and I'm gonna draw this product in pencil to help me out with that hydrolysis. So now we're gonna have the carboxylic acid here. And so when we hydrolyze an acetal, that acetal carbon will become a carbonyl, and these two oxygens would go back to being alcohols. Remember, we form an acetal from alcohols, your carbonyl compound, and a dry acid catalyst. So we wanna do the hydrolysis here. We recognize that we're cleaving these bonds so that this goes back to being a carbonyl and this small alcohol or diol would be a byproduct. So if we're looking for the major product, we're looking for this carbon containing compound. So we're looking for the benzene ring with the carboxylic acid and the aldehyde in a one, three relationship to each other. And that is option D.